I said, uh, it, this is going to be very, let's say, very, very long day, but like I said, it's going to be very, very inspirational day, and we are going to have a lot of good talks. And uh, the person who is sitting next to me is also a very, very inspiring person. And his career was exceptional, and he has a chance to try, to say, try all, all of it, like we said, academy part, uh, professional part, as, as well as research part, professional part. So, uh, like I said, I think that uh, maybe the best thing will be like maybe that I give you a few minutes just to give us a short introduction about what you have to, uh, did you in the last five or six years, to, uh, just to give the scope of your work to the person so they can meet you a little, a little bit better. And after that, we can start with the question mark. Let me take out a bit of the pressure of the equation. I think this was a mistake. I think you're overestimating me, but I'm going to do my best to, um, you know, it's like a, like a piece of software which, the, which needs to hit the market. Uh, it's never perfect, so I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna play software um, this morning. This was a joke which didn't work. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a real pleasure having uh, uh, being here, having been invited. It's a real pleasure seeing all of you. And actually, it's uh, I need to say uh, I need to give a particular thanks to some really good and close friends who came from Belgrade uh, and, and other areas um, to, to to be here and, uh, and see all of us. It's uh, it's incredibly interesting times. I think there couldn't be a better. Uh, better timing for an event like the one we're having today and also not a better region because we need to be aware that uh, the southeastern European realm is uh, is key and, uh, and at the core and at the heart of, uh, of digitalization. Um, this is uh, the beautiful thing about, uh, about digital uh, entrepreneurship that it basically really enables regions which are potentially not the strongest in production, not the strongest in, in other areas, but uh, due to the scalability and to the, the, the uh, uh, you know, the smartness trickling completely through the soft, uh, soft uh, and hardware combination, you basically can make a difference no matter where you are. I'm not saying that uh, uh, this is a great, great region in other areas as well, but uh, you know, basically you can be uh, at the forefront and one of the most powerful players, if not the most powerful, if you're just good at it. Um, I think that the talk about ecosystems is sometimes a bit overrated uh, because basically it's about, and this is the beautiful thing about uh, this topic, it's about your mind, your brain, and your uh, ability to implement. That's it. Um, everything else you know requires a hell of a ton of a lot of money. Of course, then in, in the later stage, we tend to uh, we need, need, need quite some money as well. But I kind of skipped the introduction right now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that you already switched to one part, so you're you're almost making me, uh, making me like uh, very, very fond of that, that I go up all out of the script. But I think that we have an uh, interesting few questions in the beginning. Uh, I would like to focus on your career from 2012 in the first place. And one of the roles you had was in the office of the President of Austria in the Department of Science and Research. What was your role there? It was a quite tiny role, to be honest. You know, whenever we talk about career, whenever we talk about careers, we should take it with a pinch of salt because careers, the way uh, you know, basically careers are uh, career talks are there in order to basically um, uh, cement and uh, freeze the status quo. That's when people start. So I'm trying not to have a career talk here because whenever people start to talk about their careers, basically they are done. You know? <laughs> That's it. Uh, they basically they talk about the past, and they basically have the, the moment where you have no more idea what you're going to do in the future, you talk about your career. So I'm really trying not to do that. But I, it's a fair question still, and I appreciate the the the, 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 the story behind them. But, um, thank you for the respect which I which I have basically for all of you, especially for those who are um, who have the feeling that they don't really have a career yet, because that's actually the, the smartest. Um, there's this song, and then I'll come back to the question again. There's, there's this great song by Baz Luhrmann. I, I tend to listen to it once uh, every, on my birthday. Um, so this is, I think, once a year. The, um, the Baz Luhrmann sunscreen. It's actually not a song, it's more a poem. And it, it sings about, or talks about more. It's, uh, you know, it's worth watching it uh, maybe somewhere at night. Um, it says that um, uh, some very interesting thirty, uh, some very interesting people didn't know what to do until they turned thirty. And some of the most interesting people didn't know after thirty either. Um, 
And I think that's a very, very uh, strong point. It's a pretty, pretty, uh, you know, basically not taking ourselves too seriously um, is the is the, the basis for creativity. It is the basis for not kind of uh, starting to be proud of what you did. Rather, I'd rather be proud of what I'm still gonna do than. But now coming back to to the presidential office, it was basically in so far very interesting as we were focusing very much on the minority topic, uh, you know, Austria has a minority, uh, a Slovenian minority in the very south, um, in, in Corinthia. I was, um, I was I, I, as a political scientist, I have a few um, educational backgrounds. I started with mechanical engineering to realize that basically I wanted to meet people at the data conference in 2022, and <laughs> mechanical engineering wouldn't bring me there, so in 1999 I switched to to something else, and that kind of spilled me by accident into the presidential office. Yeah. And uh, I also kind of intentionally then left again because I, I was, uh, I was extremely young, and I still needed to develop a bit. And actually, I was, um, I, I was doing what I just said before. You know, yeah. the moment where you basically think that you're done. Um, you this is basically like an internal, or in, in, inner retirement. And uh, if someone thinks that this is it at 25, which was the age which I had back then, uh, uh, this is basically not really bringing you anywhere. Uh, it was still, it's great and it's still, uh, you know, I can still show off. <laughs> I can still show off quite a bit with it, but um, in the end it was a great, uh, great experience um, getting there. It was an honor and it's, um, uh, sometimes actually it's uh, it's more important um, where you live to, but where you've been to. Yeah. Again, same topic as before. Yeah, uh, I would like just to spice up the thing and maybe skip the part of your, like, uh, like, like you said, you would like to skip the part of the career, so I'm totally okay with that to improvise a little bit like what we have said. So I would just like, like you said, that basically three of the most important things that in your career, besides this, was that you were uh, assistant, uh, uh, assistant to the director of the Rats. You, uh, right now you're also like uh, uh, ambassador at ESA, uh, the European Space Agency, and you're also mentioning director of uh, uh, science park grass. So I think that's that very important. Maybe uh, as an introduction to the like the topic we're going to talk, uh, can you tell us a bit more uh, about why is data so important for European Space Agency? Like this is the title of the talk. So maybe one or two sentences, just like to give the some kind of universal truth to everyone to understand why is data so crucial for European Space Agency. Well, the, the whole business model of the of, of space uh, as a as a as a topic is very much uh, has data as a basis because there is no you know there you can't uh, it, there is the, 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 the data flow the permanent data flow is the whole the whole reason why people f uh, why why missions are being flown um, the tourism thing the space tourism thing is not so much about data the space tourism thing is about showing off and about um, old, white, rich males um, uh, compensating for uh, certain inabilities um, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, trying to build the biggest rocket. Too much deep. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's also, you know, it's a, it, there, there, is, there is something beautiful about people burning money, it generates, and this is more or less the case here, uh, so space tourism, I would say, is not really is not really uh, data driven. Space tourism is ego driven. Okay. Why is the rest of the space topic uh, very much data driven? First of all, because of the of the digital connection, which is the basis for the internet interaction and communication with uh, with the with the with the orbiting systems. Uh, second, um, it is actually the beauty of uh, of space that we have a, a layering of data, which in the end, and this is very much probably what the next two days will touch upon in a, on a regular basis, that it is actually, this is where the, the whole AI topic comes in, because we as humans are having a very hard time to, to, to see the, to the, the, the patterns within hundreds of layers. So, yeah. you know, there is some geniuses, but overall this is, this is where, where AI and, uh, and, and pattern recognition really comes in. Because you basically need to, you need to, uh, within these hundreds of layers, you need to see where the light goes through, uh, and uh, if it's the right, if it's the right place, this is where where you want to be. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. Sorry. So basically, the data. What we are, the beautiful thing about, uh, especially when it comes to Earth observation, uh, there's there's basically three elements about uh, 
about space. And we, are, we need to be aware that the space sector is actually um, three times, ha having three times the turnover of Apple. Everybody is, uh, is in awe <laughs> of Apple. The space sector in total, um, and this is of course very much the downstream sector, which is 100% data driven. Downstream se sector, you know, basically the, 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 fat, the fat guys flying up uh, to, 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 to invite some of their friends uh, for five minutes of, uh, of, 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 of microgravity. This is, not, uh, this is not so much it. This is upstream. Uh, the downstream part is, uh, is, the, is, is where the real money and where the really interesting parts are. Um, so basically, we're able, to, we're able to, to see the nutrition content of fields. We're able to predict um, from space, to predict uh, how the harvest, uh, how, the, how the next harvest is going to be. We are able to, as a consequence, by layering the data um, further, furthermore, we're able to uh, already predetermine potential futures on, for example, wheat based on the color the wheat has. You can, um, and this is like, we're talking about uh, hundreds of kilometers of distance, but by the color of the wheat, you can have a pattern recognition and determine more or less um, how, how the output uh, for this uh, yes, harvest is going to be. Yeah, this sounds um, very, very interesting because uh, what you're saying basically is like, well, let's say, you, we are having introspective because we are, we are looking from outside of the planet, so basically we can also say that is the, that is the approach, one of the uh, best approaches in data science in general, that you have like, to try to, uh, to uh, look from not only from inside the problem, but also to have somebody from outside of the problem to look and give a fresh perspective, because sometimes you're asking wrong questions, so basically when you're having like a different perspective, it can give you so, so much bigger things that you didn't even, even think about it, and it's basically genius in your innovative way. Yeah, I mean, you need both. I, I agree 100% with you, Alexander, but uh, we, we need the deep dive in terms of software talk, we need the deep dive, uh, so basically like, you know, because it's a bit of a pain that, um, that, uh, that uh, you, you, you don't really create a great product by, by only looking from the very top, from a superposition. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, you create, uh, you create a, a strong vision and basically the deep divers are very rarely creating a, a huge uh, successful product. They are creating a good piece of software, but the, the, <laughs> the problem, and then we'll come back to the space topic again, but the big problem is actually that good software, perfect software, doesn't sell. You know, I mean, every huge player on the market, uh, uh, be it, I, I'm not going to mention names because some are, um, some might be up there, <laughs> and um, I'm not trying to bring you into trouble, but no, basically the most successful uh, um, um, uh, software companies are, are actually kicking out bugs on a permanent basis, and it's, uh, we, this, I'm not trying to criticize that, I'm actually trying to make a case for be, be able to live with the imperfection of our existence and of our products. Uh, it's not cool, and it's very annoying, and the, the, you sit there and you think you're stupid, but it's not you, huh? it's just some bug somewhere. Um, we've all typed the same password uh, 10 times uh, thinking that we kind of lost our brains and the 11th time it worked and it was the same password <laughs> each time. And then your IT guy tells you, your, the, your IT support tells you, you know, it's not the computer, it's you. Which is not, mostly not, uh, not always right at least, yeah? So, um, being able, and this is also what, they, by the way, uh, is, about, is, is necessary to look at, about, uh, at when we look at careers. You know, not look for perfection. No, no like, no. What? Why? Why does? Uh, why does uh, everything need an update every few days or weeks? Because it's imperfect. Because things change. Because there is a tax. Because, because there there is a tax. Because there was a, an in, in, in inadequate uh, thing put into the market. Of course, first hand. On the other hand, of course, it's also beautiful because there's creative people hitting it. You know, it's also interesting. So to once touch upon the space topic again. Um, it's this, uh, the, 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 the beautiful thing about space as such is actually that when you take, uh, when you take gravity out of the equation and when you re like really fly a bit higher, um, first of all, as you said, Alexander, you can see things much clearer. Um, it's actually also very cheap to go for the big picture, you know, the detail is always extremely expensive. The big picture, you know, um, let's fly over Europe and see how the, how the, how the vegetation is, takes takes a few minutes, uh, every 90 minutes, um, uh, some, some ESA satellites. By, by the way, the European Space Agency is absolutely uh, at, the, at, the, at the heart of Earth observation. No one is better at Earth observation. I mean, um, you know, there's other great agencies as well, but when it comes to Earth observation, uh, there's no one competing. 
And why is this? First of all, because there is great devices out there. Um, uh, second, and this is the heart, and this is important for you, it's all open data, it's all open source. Yeah. So basically you can access the European Space Agency's data for free, you can build, build business models on these data. This is, by the way, what I'm doing together with my startups. Uh, we're doing nothing else. Uh, well, a few things. But <laughs> we're, we're doing, we, we basically, based on the data which these agency provides us with, uh, and provides everybody with, um, uh, we are, they're not so easy. They need, uh, as, I, as I said at the beginning, they're multi-layered. It's a huge bunch of, uh, you know, like it makes you, um, uh, there's Slovenian comp uh, Sentinel, uh, Sentinel Hub uh, yeah. being extremely strong at the at the conversion in order to to, to drive it into a proper picture, um, because what you get is uh, is, is, is quite uh, quite a complex uh, structure. Yeah, basically, um, um, uh, I think like it's, uh, it's going to be very 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 dynamic. So basically, you start to talk about I mean, startups and. Uh, what I want to say is that basically, uh, I don't know if uh, all of the people here know, but it's really important information that basically uh, the Science Park Rats is also doing as a European Space Agency business incubator as well. Uh, so basically that, that's, that's one of the parts of your job. And when you start, start talking about startups, I think this is the perfect mode maybe that we can switch a little bit also into, into the technical part and you start mentioning some of the startups. So, so basically, uh, can you tell us uh, just, just quickly a bit more about uh, your uh, incubator and what have you achieved so far, like as, a, as this part, and how this connection was also crucial to the development of the of the open data, data openness in the European Space Agency. Yes, basically I'm writing I'm, I'm, I'm writing the open data uh, uh, approach. I didn't really contribute to it. This was some smart people deciding on it. Uh, very much of a European, you know. We had the, we tend to be. I'm always kind of walking around your question. Yeah, but okay. I'm like um, <laughs> I'm, uh, we tend to be. We Europeans tend to be extremely good at inventing things. We are we are inventors. Like if you look at Nikola Tesla, having having like everybody claims a share of him. Uh, you know, Slovenians do, the Croatians do, the the the, the Serbians do, the Austrians do. No? He studied in Graz, so people think that he's uh, uh, he's, uh, he's he's Austrian. The Austrians think he's Austrian. Um, of course, uh, this is a more complex and uh, given uh, times of conflict uh, like the ones we're living in, this is something to really look at uh, what uh, what this guy actually had to do. He had to leave. But Nikola Tesla, I, 25 years ago, I worked scientifically on, on him when basically the, the car was not uh, um, diluting the name so much. The car, by the way, but, uh, <laughs> but the, 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 uh, Nikola Tesla had to leave for New York um, in order to kind of make a proper proper career. Uh, he was kicked out of Technical University of Graz because he was uh, uh, billiard playing all night long and uh, having a very intense, unstable life. You know, exactly what, <laughs> like, today he would be a programmer. Um, <laughs> he would be here at Data Science Conference and uh, tell you that. Which, uh, no, the, um, so he was kicked out of the university. Of course, the university, I've been working there, uh, doesn't tell that story, huh? they tell that he was a student. Uh, he was, by the way, incredibly good. Whatever he did, he was incredibly good at. Quite intense as well. And then he left uh, for, I'm coming back to your question. Of course, no, and then he left for, 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 for New York um, with a recommendation letter. It's a beautiful story. With a recommendation letter, uh, uh, he, went to, he went directly from the boat to Thomas Alpha Edison, uh, Edison's office. Back then, uh, Edison was quite someone. Um, and uh, he, he, he gave him the recommendation letter from the, from the Edison uh, uh, office manager or from the Edison representative in Paris, whom he had basically approached before. And this letter basically was very short and said, I know two great men. One is you, the other one is standing in front of you. <laughs> and uh, so that guy, uh, we need to think why did he have to leave? Why did he have to leave? Well, basically, uh, Europe was war-torn. Europe had not, uh, had not seen uh, periods of peace uh, for too long. Um, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was dis differentiated by na different forms of nationalism, and that's more or less why we uh, lost this inventor, um, and uh, actually others in the US then started to innovate well. The point I want to make, and then I'm coming back to my startups, but it connects. We are incredibly good at inventing, but the, uh, like you know, the, the really hard part is the innovation process in, 
developing a, a great idea into a great product which actually earns money. Because in the end, we are material human beings and we, are, we, 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 need, to, we need to kind of uh, have uh, economically viable business models. I have a big sympathy for, for failure, uh, for beautiful inventions failing. Um, and I have even more sympathy for guys like Nikola Tesla who basically changed the planet um, and still died poor. This is a beautiful story to tell. I'm not sure whether it's a beautiful life to live. So and now, <laughs> Alexander, I'm touching upon your question. This is exactly what I'm doing with my startups and with a great team at Science Park. We are basically driving the dreams, visions, and ideas uh, of our clients, of our startups, into reality by making them hit the market successfully and as heavy as possible to generate uh, to generate revenue and make a good life and generate good, make a good life for the founders and uh, hopefully also allow to generate revenue in order to have follow-up innovations because. First of all, uh, you, you have one great thing, um, and then you need to have, have follow-up inventions and, and tr turn them into innovations. That's what we do, and we are damn good at converting money into education. We are damn good at converting money in Europe, in general. Damn good at converting money into science and research, but not really good at, uh, at, at getting the money out again yeah. by innovating. You know? Basically, the, the all critical things which are coining our our industry today have been developed in Europe and the main players are uh, in Silicon Valley and beyond. We need to kind of look at the pattern like as if it was a multi-layered problem. Um, and you don't need an AI for that. Basically, we are, uh, it's, it's basically also, it takes two skill sets. Um, uh, the, the skill set for, to explore, exploration takes a special mind. Exploration is the, the beautiful, complex, this is the, this is the heroic part. And the exploitation um, uh, takes a bit of a different skill set again. It's, it doesn't seem to be so heroic, but it, it allows you to earn money. It allows you to, to make a living. It allows basically larger parts of society to profit from your ideas, visions, and, and dreams. And very rarely, and this is why, this is the main reason why actually almost no successful big company was ever founded by one founder. Uh, uh, of course, the stories then are being told. Uh, Tesla was not founded by Elon Musk, by the way. Uh, he bought in. Um, uh, SpaceX was not founded by Elon Musk. He bought, he bought, he bought a company which basically had tried hard, uh, but economically unsuccessful. It I'm not trying Twitter. to, I, I like him. Now <laughs> I like him, so basically we need to be aware that it takes different skill sets, I'm repeating myself, but this is what I do, I'm developing, um, I'm developing inventors uh, into innovators, trying to make, to, to make sure that they get a fair share of, of the cake and that they make really money with what, they, what, they, what they've created. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it's, this is not just about money, it's also about, you know, participation as I've already mentioned, a part participation allowing you and me to participate in a great product. In a, in a, in a, it's th there's, there's something deeply, uh, uh, there's some deeper morale in this which I actually like and which makes my, uh, which makes my daily work pretty, pretty uplifting and uh, it's, it's beautiful to work with people who are actually, it's, it's, it's beautiful to work with innovate, with inventors. Um, innovators tend to kind of, uh, tend to have uh, something it's important, but th there is something sleek and uh, efficient about them. The inventor, you know, it likes the beauty. It's like a, like a good line of code. It's beautiful. It, it, might, it might not be the, the path to success, but there is something beautiful in a nice, uh, in, in a nice line of code. Okay, uh, my question for you is uh, also the guy I would like to, to, to get a little bit more touch of for the, the, the startups you mentioned. You just uh, mentioned one of the startups, it's artificial intelligence. Also, let's say two uh, notable mentions of what you do in research for, and I think it would be very interesting to mention to the public and just briefly maybe explain what they do. They are a Sentinel Hub and a Blocking High as well. So basically, maybe, maybe I, if I can ask you just to give us a, a, just a brief overview what does this the company do, like uh, in terms of so people can get uh, understanding what kind of startups are there and what they are doing. Basically, it's a, it's a bit hard because they, they it's hard. I'm not uh, you know this is a, this is already quite big players, and I do not have the uh, I have I do not uh, have the clearance to to fully speak about them. Um, very good question. On the other hand, so I need to speak uh, very uh, um, modestly, not in detail, because uh, um, you know uh, my job is to help them and not to 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 to. Um, 
to bring trouble to them, uh, this would be. But basically, what uh, what both of them do is, um, especially uh, the previous the, the Sentinel Hub, is uh, is working on the uh, on as I mentioned on the multi layering of data and on the conversion, uh, the capability to make use of Sentinel European Space Agency Sentinel uh, uh, data, which is the Earth Observation Program um, uh, of uh, of the agency. And about the robotic eyes? Robotic eyes is itself are an interesting company as Wolfgang Walker, the uh, founder, the, one of the three founders, it's three founders, um, was, was, the, was the core part of the Microsoft HoloLens development team. Um, <laughs> you know, that's the thing which used to be big a few years ago. No. Um, my jokes don't work this morning. I think you, we all should have had some coffee. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I like the whole lens. It's perfect. It's maybe it's so perfect that what I said before is applying. Yeah. Um, uh, and it also, it, uh, coming back to Wolfgang Walker, the whole HoloLens is also beautiful in so far as it allows you to have a mixed reality. There is no future for the complete uh, excluded reality, like secluded uh, approach. You need the mixed structure. This is life, you know. You need to see. You need to see uh, the. This is the future of, of digitalization in general. To layer it with our reality, um, and this is gonna hit. Uh, this is gonna. This has been. You know, things take still even in digitalization. And then I'll come back to Wolf, to Wolfgang, um, to robotic guys. Even in digitalization, things take 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 quite a while. Then all at once, like popcorn. You know, popcorn. You throw it into the into the pan. You heat the the oil, and you think. You think the popcorn is, is kind of pulled and doesn't work and whatever. And then all at once, within five seconds, the whole, the whole, the whole fucking uh, pan explodes. And you didn't see it coming. This is what trends and, and, and disruptive uh, change is about. Everybody thinks, you know, the same with robot rapid prototyping, 3D printing. Everybody thinks this is not really working out. So this is, a, this is for small. This is going to be popcorn. Um, because you know it takes it takes a while. It takes still in digitalization. It is quicker, but still we need overall decades to have it blow up. And uh, Wolfgang Walker and the robotic guys is basically uh, uh, in a multifaceted uh, uh, approach using space data, using, using uh, uh, the GPS, uh, GNSS data. Um, is using, uh, by the way, also multi-layering again. Uh, they are uh, support. They are huge in their their beaming. Very easy, you know. The, the the easy stuff is actually the one which earns you money. They're beaming construction plans onto the ground of 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 of, of industrial facilities. So people who are actually in geographies where reading plans is not so uh, not so such an easy uh, task, or maybe not so such an uh, based on education uh, issues not so not so common. That basically the, the factory is still having the right squares at the right at the right corners, uh, and still is kind of built in a proper manner. And it, while this sounds so easy, um, first of all, of course the devil is in the detail, but second, this is working. This is, this is this is making money. I started to work with these guys a few years ago, and they're like cash flow positive. They're not even needing investors anymore because they're so good at what they do. That's excellent. Sorry. And uh, what I want to also ask, uh, I would like to tackle a bit more about the importance of data in ESA. So basically, uh, how does data, data science, and AI help a ESA work to be done uh, better and faster? You said that data is very important. Basically, the key uh, drive behind the business model of uh, ESA. But how does the, uh, data science and AI helps ESA work to be done uh, better and faster? How much the, the breakout of the technology in the previous five or ten years has made, uh, uh, what kind of possibility made for the ESA? The, the, the question is in so far complex to answer because actually the space agencies are using very, very old technology because of the, uh, they need to rely on uh, they need to be absolutely sure that it works, and they need to be redundant, and basically it's mostly uh, 50 to 20 year old technology being used. Very few people know that. Okay, so it's like really old, uh, old uh, uh, processors, really old processors, with actually pretty low performance, um, like really low performance. Um, which, which, which is, uh, your, your cell phones are actually a powerhouse compared to it. 
Um, when it comes to a really heavy mission, you don't want to you don't want to kill it. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to lose a two billion euro mission because of an uh, overheated processor. Yep. Um, so basically, there is the answer is complex because the the the, the, space, the space agencies as such are very conservative um, on their explorers with uh, with uh, you know. A mission takes 30 years in total, 10 years of planning, 10 years of flying, 10 years of data analytics. So basically, I'm not sure how, yeah, I think I'm much older, they're younger than me, but I'm, if I started today to, 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 to do a moon mission or some deep space mission, I wouldn't get the results. I would be watching the results in my retirement on television. What does this do to an ego, to the ego? That's why it's actually not, that's why someone who works in space doesn't really like to talk about the career bit, because you're making the career. <laughs> it's always a good career is the career you're making for others. Because the one who is taking over the mission 25 years from now, he will be or she will be the, uh, the, the one giving you all the great data. Because um, you know, all the results will be, will be, will be sold by the, by, the, by the person who's actually, uh, not even out of school yet. Can you imagine? And so who's having the career now? The one who's selling it or the one who created the data or the one who actually steered the mission because he or she will be gone as well. So basically ESA and the, the agencies in general are not so much classically data driven in an interesting manner. They are actually very conservative and uh, everyone here, no one here would be would be too impressed by the by the by the, by the technology, um, it's it's impressive how it works under under dire conditions. It's impressive how the different instruments work, but overall, you know, you couldn't you couldn't mine you couldn't mine any cryptocurrency with the performance of these machines. Of course. Um, second, uh, the the uh, the agencies have been very very uh, clear about the about the about the importance of data and about the uh, especially importance of seeing CO2, seeing emissions, you know, whatever you can smell and whatever a gas is, you can sense. Because um, the, spectro the, the, the spectrographic image of, of, of our planet is basically giving you everything in terms of uh, different layers, layers of, uh, not layers of data, but layers of gases. So that this is when, when, the, uh, when, when we first uh, went into a bit of a home office period. Uh, you can see that uh, the planet got much, uh, uh, much cleaner. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and this is actually, it's very much of an enlightening uh, approach what, the, what, what the, the, the bigger picture uh, generates. You know, it's a bit like, uh, this is a bit like giving us a very clear understanding. This is the basic, the basis of science, showing you what's there and then of course you have to draw conclusions. And, um, but probably the future, um, and now I'm finally answering, you, answering your question, uh, the future of, uh, of the space agencies is going to be very much uh, an educational one and one which is providing, and this is actually what, uh, what Starlink uh, has been trying to start and is more or less successful at, and also kind of monopolizing, is the is the provision of is the provision of uh, of data connections to, uh, to, to, to 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 regions in general, which uh, like to, to all of us, but in particular to those regions where the infrastructure does not really allow to to have the to have the have a earthbound um, data connection. Um, we see this now at the, at the, at the moment quite uh, quite. Uh, efficiently, effectively being rolled out in Ukraine. Um, everybody can get a Starlink account. It's, 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 it's incredibly, it's good, it's really fast. Um, it's, it's still quite expensive and uh, it's gonna stay expensive because uh, basically uh, there is a monopoly um, created and this is something which we may, might want to talk about as well. You know? yeah. the, 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 okay, good. And uh, what I want to say, uh, I think that uh, right now we are, uh, we are understanding why the open data and uh, why the ES, uh, ESA is so, so invested in open data. I'd just like to, to honorably mention like three programs that we, uh, we, we said as examples. Uh, one of them is Earth Observation Data Access Portal, which gives you the data uh, of a wide variety of the resources for the Earth. Uh, uh, Earth. Also, there is Sentinel online website, which provides technical information on the uh, Copernicus Sentinel missions. 
and access to the data systematic process and available online. So basically you can use them in your in, in corporate, in your businesses, for example, if you're doing some, some kind of business regarding um, like, you know, self-driving cars, or you're doing some kind of business regarding agro, you can use this data and also implement it. Many people don't understand the full impact and full power of the of the uh, open data that has not only by itself but also incorporating into your data, like mixing two data sets and after that. And last but not the least is also for high resolution data because sometimes that's not enough. There's also operating space component data access website. And being said that, my question to you, the final one maybe, who I would like to give this impression from your side is, uh, what is your opinion toward the idea that companies should also be the part of the open data movement, especially the big four? back before and uh, give back the data they use at least to the scientific community for data for good projects, if nothing else. Well, basically, I think, you know, one can discuss whether capitalism is a good thing or not. We cannot discuss too much whether we have a proper form of capitalism. We don't, because there is uh, far too ma many, and I've touched upon the monopoly topic, there's far too many monopoly uh, uh, monopolies generated, so basically we don't really, we do, we do have a market, but we do not really have a, um, the business model which we have been being presented to have is not really valid, because basically without serious competition and without the proper exchange of information at the level uh, which really allows you to take an informed decision, we are not talking about, uh, about capitalism, this is a quasi um, there's a quasi, there is quasi monopolies or real monopolies, which are more or less uh, coining our, our 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 markets and our our, our businesses as a, as a knock-on effect. This is a problem because this is basically making this is generating huge uh, huge amounts of income and wealth uh, for a few. Whenever this happens, um, uh, you can very vividly see that this is a failure of regulation. Um, uh, when Rockefeller became the richest man on earth, uh, we're talking about the 1910s, uh, 20s. He first of all did have 1 billion euros. This was the richest man on earth, having not even, I think, 1.1 billion at the very end. What happened was that he was basically owning about 80% of the oil business, leading to the uh, to this to the American uh, 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 government uh, decides to to deconstruct his empire. Completely, Standard Oil, Rockefeller Standard Oil was uh, was chopped into pieces uh, in order to generate uh, proper competition. Um, so to come to the question whether the Big Four should be part of the open data, you know, basically, I, I like the Big Four because they're they you know like they are they're doing they're doing great stuff. Uh, we can base businesses on. But on the other hand, they are exactly what I've just described. Yep. They are huge, they're too big to, they're actually so big that basically they can, uh, they can buy businesses which are not earning money for 44 billion euros. You know? This is a business which didn't earn a single dime yet. Just imagine what kind of market structure we have where someone, just because he or she wants to, kicks in 44 billion euros or dollars, I think it's dollars, 44 billion dollars, for something which is not earning a dime. Can you imagine? This is beautiful. Why is this being done? Because of the monopoly structure. You know, you own it long term. This is like the new, the big four. Uh, we have one, one, one more minute. The big four, what they, what they are doing is basically, they are taking over, and I'm not judging, rules of the state. The state used to put his money into businesses which took 20 years to develop. This is called education. This is called power stations, hydro energy. This takes decades to absorb in terms of investment. Your, your education, my education, has not paid back fully for the state yet. But it's a good investment. Uh, with us, for sure. <laughs> but, uh, for you as well. Um, I'm not really funny today, right? Um, the, um, <laughs> so basically, the same is the case, uh, the point here. We need to be aware that the big four actually are so big, it's similar to a bank, that they might be too big to fail. We need to work with them. I like them. It's impressive what they get done. Um, but of course, it becomes a self-propelling message as well. We need to be aware of that, you know? And I, 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 I very much like the idea of, uh, of creating competition because that's the only thing which is in our hands. We need to create competition 
two business models which are which are so dominant uh, that uh, that they basically are almost suffocating the market and here and there also suffocating our intellectuals uh, intellectual minds because this is not this is not cool this is dominance this is not uh, what the market uh, what the market needs this is not what is going to create a better data driven and more equal society as well so That's now three, three seconds to go thank you so much for having me <laughs> We are running a little bit late. I will give you, uh, if there is some questions, maybe we have uh, time for one question from the public, just to, uh, just to have it like a bit, uh, a bit uh, let's say, to, to see what you think. So I'd like to ask, is there any kind of questions from anyone? Or, no, still, still shy. But uh, what I would like uh, to add uh, is uh, one, one, uh, one part that I wanted to say for the last, that's also, uh, I just wanted to say also thank you to for, for Meta, who was founder, who also had about this, uh, this part with the, uh, with the open data for the research and for the public uh, policy. Uh, so, uh, just one, one last question, your thoughts is, what would, what would be your advice for someone who is thinking about starting a data-driven uh, startup? What should be done first, what, in the terms of developing your own idea into a product? Well, yeah, of course, uh, the, the, the direct answer would be, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be less egotistic here. Join, try to, try to create a form of team. Don't okay. try to be alone, don't do it alone. Be, be, be like, f fairly uh, give shares to the team, but still make sure that someone is uh, clearly in the lead. Um, develop as a human being in order to be a good team lead. Uh, not the boss. Okay. Never talk about employees. Always talk about colleagues. Once you have colleagues, um, because you will keep them if uh, you see them as colleagues and not as employees, because this is a very patronizing, uh, actually a down, downward, uh, like backward-looking form of you know slavery. Um, we need to get rid of that. The whole business uh, of the, the whole digitalization and uh, and and the business we are all in needs to make a difference in terms of also the way we, we should not generate, we sh we, you can't generate new businesses and good money by, by, by following old rules and, 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 and slavery-like employment structures. You need to be, we need to kind of break different patterns in order to like really make a difference. And this is actually something which we can learn from the big for meta, you know. These cool companies which are actually, which don't give a shit about uh, classic conformities. And this is something to draw from. So form a team, join an incubator if you have one around. Be happy, ha happily call uh, Science Park or write an email, maybe better, um, you know, with data. Um, write an email, give, get in contact with us, get in contact with me. I'll be, I'm not trying to get you to Graz or one of our other uh, uh, locations. I'm gonna try to, but basically incubation is a, is a form of trying to avoid failures and mistakes. We are not perfect either, by the way. Um, for sure, I'm not. Uh, the team is actually very good and uh, is is giving. It's it's about maximization of chances of success. It doesn't always work out, but um, you know you need to. Even if it doesn't work out, you need to have a plan that you still have energy to to start through once more to go around and uh, have another go. So team, uh, don't don't be going for the, don't go for the most perfect solution. Go for a rough and ready structure because anyhow you need to adopt it in the market then. Um, uh, and look at uh, look at the big players. Look at Microsoft. I mean, every day they're updating in order to get rid of some mistakes. Of course. So that's life, you know. Okay. I think there's a question now. We are lucky. <laughs> Sensing 
You know, I see this from a from an enlightened perspective. Uh, there can't be any riskiness about uh, about uh, showing uh, showing people what's going on on the planet. Actually, it, uh, it's it's the basis. By the way, the whole basis for our climate for our clear climate change awareness or climate catastrophe awareness, however you might want to, want want to frame it, is very much down to the space agencies uh, showing us what's going on. You know? um, this is a, is a pivotal and critical part of this. So I see no risks here. I see, uh, but there is a there is a potential risk of Earth observation, um, which is coming from uh, from here and there some private companies, to be honest, which are driving innovation on one hand, but also are very much employed by the intelligence agencies in order to give highly precise, uh, um, millimeter accurate data on 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 what's going on on the ground. Um, this is actually in terms of privacy management and in terms of privacy protection of privacy, this is going to be serious, uh, this, is, uh, this is open data, uh, we're talking about open scientific data uh, at the resolution which doesn't matter, um, but when the resolution gets down to kind of uh, almost seeing the time on your watch when you get, uh, get, uh, get pictured, uh, this can be kind of uncool. And, uh, we need to always, whenever dynamisms are going towards a, a powerful direction, and uh, at the moment this is the case with space science in general, and data, we need to be very much aware, all of us, that uh, whenever things go, go strong, uh, there's a lot of dangers as well. And the, the self-destructive uh, element of, uh, of systems, look at the combustion engine. One of the most beautiful things ever developed, the internal combustion engine. I mean, it's, it's beauty. I love it. What did it do? It became so successful that it basically is now completely screwed. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be gone soon, uh, uh, at least in the developed uh, the surroundings, because of success. You know, success. If you basically, if you're too good at something, you basically suffocate everything around you. You know, you don't want to be a perfect boss either. By the way. If you're too perfect, you know, people are not uh, gonna be respecting you for a while and then they will feel inferior. So I'm trying, I'm very good at that, at making people feel good, huh? uh, working around me. My jokes really don't work. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, uh, once again, I would like to thank Martin for uh, being here. Uh, it was a really lovely uh, opening keynote. And once again, thank you so much for your talk. So one round of applause for Martin. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. <laughs>